हेलो गाइस वेलकम टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल सो टुडे आई एम गोना टॉक अबाउट हाउ टू कैलकुलेट मॉडिफाइड गेज प्रेशर एज वेल एज इट्स करस्पॉन्डिंग एलोंगेशन बेस्ड अपॉन द प्रॉपर्टीज प्रोवाइडेड बाय द मैन्युफैक्चरर यूज्ड इन पोस्ट टेंशनिंग ऑफ अ प्री स्ट्रेस कॉन्क्रीट इन साइट ऑपरेशन बट बिफोर दैट आई विल मेक यू फेमिलियर विद द टाइप्स ऑफ प्री स्ट्रेसिंग द लॉसेज इनकर्ड इन प्री स्ट्रेसिंग लेटर ऑन आई विल शो यू द कैलकुलेशन इन्वॉल्व इन साइट सो लेट अस स्टार्ट लेट अस अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज प्री स्ट्रेस्ड कॉन्क्रीट Why pre-stressing became the savior for construction work? When the beam girder are subjected to external forces, the beam tend to sag on mid-span. This sag indicates that the bottom fibers of a beam below neutral axis is subjected to tensile forces. As we know that concrete is weak in tension, beams may start developing cracks or deflect more than the permissible limits with time. Also due to this problem it was difficult to construct bridges of longer spans After extensive research and analysis it was observed that when the stance of particularly higher tensile strength was stressed initially and then transferred to the beam the stance introduced compressive stresses in concrete below neutral axis which results in hocking of concrete Thus, this hogging indicates that the bottom fibers of concrete are now subjected to compressive stresses. Therefore, the tensile stresses due to external forces can be counteracted by this introduction of compressive stresses at bottom. Therefore, this created the possibility of constructing bridges of larger spans. Please note, the strands or cables used in pre-stressed concrete have higher tensile strength as compared to steel used in RCC. the strands may be ranging from 1200 to 2000 mpa this figure shows the strands along with the anchor plate along with the bearing plate and the guided trumpet so we understood why pre stressing phenomena of pre stressing the process of pre stressing was necessary in this modern construction world so let us define pre stressed concrete we can say that as a process in which concrete is subjected to initial compressive stress with the help of high tensioned strands in order to resist tensile forces acting on concrete during working condition is called pre stressing such concrete is called pre stressed concrete so there are two types of pre stressing which can be done on site one is pre tensioning and the other one is post tensioning In pre-tensioning the strands or cables are initially stressed with the help of anchorages before concreting is done in post-tensioning strands cables are stressed with the help of anchorages after concreting is done the various losses encountered in pre-tensioning is loss of loss due to relaxation of steel elastic shortening creep and shrinkage in post-tensioning the losses are same in addition with it there are few more losses such as friction loss anchorage slip creep and shrinkage creep and shrinkage are long term phenomena which can be encountered in both pre-tensioning and post-tensioning another distinguished parameter between pre-tensioning and post-tensioning is pre-tensioning method is adopted vastly for railway sleepers electric pole girders whereas post tensioning method is extensively used in construction of various types of bridges nuclear reactors cement silos dams etc thus pre tensioning and post tensioning both can be done however there are always pros and cons of each others so let us consider an example of pre stressed concrete in which the designer has given the properties of strands based on which he has also given the jacking force required on site and also the elongation which has to be observed on site but since the strand properties vary from side to side we need to compare it with the manufacturer properties we need to compare the strand properties as given by the manufacturer so here are the details of our example the strand properties mentioned in drawings are theoretical modulus of elasticity is 195 kN per mm square the type of strands used is 7 ply 12.7 mm dia theoretical area of a strand is 98.7 mm square the jack force required on site is 266.81 ton permissible anchorage slip permissible anchorage slip is equal to 6 mm required theoretical elongation is 101 mm at each end while jacking 
actual area of a strand given by the manufacturer is 99.02 mm square and the actual modulus of elasticity is 198.11 kN per mm square and the ram area of a jack is 563.723 cm square and the jack efficiency is given as 98.9% therefore we need to calculate the modified elongation based upon the properties given by the manufacturer let us see the calculations as follows as I have said we need to calculate the modified gauge pressure the manufacturer is provided the jack efficiency as 98.9% hence the modified gauge pressure will be equal to jacking force upon ram area divided by jack efficiency into 1000 therefore we will get the modified gauge, uh, modified gauge pressure as 482.9 kg per centimeter square since the tolerance since the permissible tolerance of modified gauge pressure is plus and minus 5% so the minus 5% comes to 458.8 and plus 5% comes to 507.10 kg per centimeter square since the modulus of elasticity assumed by the designer varies as per manufacturer details and also the theoretical area is different from the actual area we need to calculate the modified elongation therefore the formula for modified elongation is given in serial number 2 which is theoretical elongation into theoretical modulus of elasticity in the theoretical area divided by actual modulus of elasticity into actual area therefore the revised elongation comes around 98.11 mm even this has a tolerance of plus 5% and minus 5% therefore the minimum elongation should be 93.2 mm and the maximum elongation should be 103.0 mm so now the strands available on site may not be straight or I should say slackiness is observed in strands thus we need to apply some initial gauge pressure to remove the same therefore the elongation reading is noted down from 50 kg per centimeter square and not from zero required gauge pressure is applied from both the ends at suitable intervals here in this case it is 50 kg per centimeter square observed elongation at every interval is noted down now in this example after noting down the elongation corresponding to 200 kg per centimeter square the strands are locked since the application of gauge pressure started from 50 the elongation corresponding to 0 to 50 has to be assumed which is equal to minimum of the average of above 3 readings or the elongation measured when the jack pressure is reapplied from 0 to 200 after locking the strands initially at 200 once the elongation from 0 to 50 is determined the pressure application starts again from 200 at 50 kg per centimeter square interval till the required elongation please note if required gauge pressure reaches first and elongation is not reached then pressure is carried up to plus 5 percent more and the corresponding elongation is noted and vice versa so i hope you all have understood how the gauge pressure and the required elongation is modified based upon the strand properties provided by the manufacturer thus i would request you all to please like and subscribe and please motivate me to make more educational video lectures regarding civil engineering thank you so much